Howard Stern Show. Tracy Morgan, old friend of the show, on many, many times. Uh, we all know he had a horrible accident, but he's back. He's Big back. Kid at the and bet. Let me look at you. Birthday. Let me look oh, at you. It's him. Let me look he at you. He looks great. Look at you. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> He's the same old Tracy. See, man, you're ready. You're ready to bang Robin. I know you're fine. My man, how are you? I love you, Howard. That's my brother. You all right? I'm good. Yes, yeah, sir. Everything good. You look good. I mean, I would say this is the thinnest I've I got ever... your letter. Now, I, I, I got was... your letter. Yes. When I... I first came home from the hospital. I know, and I and I said, oh man, I I didn't know how to reach. You know, I didn't know what to do. I was so upset about this accident, and I called Jimmy Kimmel. I go, well, you you know Tracy better than I do. Get, get, Cats what was we... trying to reach out. You know, the Gotti family, the Colombo family. Everybody <laughs> tried to reach out. Did they all treat out? Uh, Obama well, called a couple were times. There people... By, me and Biden got to a big argument. By. Tracy, huh? were there people who didn't reach out? Who perhaps you Baby were... mothers. Is that right? Chicks I had sex with and didn't take my socks off. <laughs> You're saying in a life-threatening situation, there are women... Who are so angry with you? They won't reach out. <laughs> <laughs> you, been, you were so bad to them that they're like, "Fuck him." Even though he <laughs> came in my eye, him. he came in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Did in the South there? Yeah. Oh my god! But for the most part, I, I feel like I tapped into something, man. A lot like, of love and goodwill out there yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh and my it, god! I tapped into it. You I know? was so upset, and I couldn't get in touch with you, and I felt like, listen, I didn't want to Howard, bother you. I wasn't talking to nobody, man. I wasn't in the state of mind for that. I didn't know how to spell my name. I could barely talk. And my feet, I was in a wheelchair for six months with my feet like this, man. Man, it's so I wasn't crazy. ready for none of that. You know I remember one time, I, me and my wife went to the mall, and I freaked out because people started coming around me. They was like looking at me like like they saw a ghost because right. it was in the media that I was dead. Right. And uh, no. I was Tracy. The thing that freaked me out the most that I read, and, and tell me if this is well, true. Well, freak you out. Okay, after you came out of your coma, and you were in a coma for like almost eight days. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh huh. Like nine and a half. That when you opened your eyes, you could not see. You were blind for for five days. For five days. Yeah. Did you? Did they think that maybe your vision wouldn't even come back? No, they didn't know. They didn't know. These is are that... neurons in your brains that are destroyed. Right. What? And it takes time to heal. They're still healing now. What are, what are the injuries? Like, how does, you, how does your sight get knocked out of you? In other words... It, I, I couldn't even answer these questions because you would have to ask the doctor. Right. You know, I just know that my wife said, um, you know, she had, she, we were an hour away on the turnpike. Exit 88 is where it happened. Right. right there. And um, you, she said you she went back yeah. to get some clothes. And the nurse Laura stayed in there with me every day, all day. She sat in the room with me every day, all day, mm. from when I first came off the helicopter. She's the one that cut my bloody clothes off for me. Wow. So she stayed with me. She stayed with me. So my wife went back home to get some clothes because they had in a hotel across the street. Mm -hmm. And um, she said she was getting clothes, and then the phone rang, and nurse always said, he's up. And he asked for you. Mm. So she just rushed back to the hospital with my son. And she, I was blind, but I was touching her face. I was holding wow. my hand, I was touching my face. So they don't even know when you come out of a coma, they don't even know they if you'll know. get your sight back at all, right? Right, they what's don't know. coming I don't out. remember none of that. Yeah, that would be the freakiest thing to me, because to me, I'd be just like, oh my God, I can't see right now, and I don't know what hit me. Because th from what I read, you say you don't even remember the accident, you no. don't remember any of the details, nor do you want to. I was gone. Yeah, you were gone. I was but gone. do you want to the... know why you're in the hospital? What what happened well, to I me? I asked my wife why I'm here. Yeah. yeah. I didn't find out Jimmy was going to two weeks later. Mm. Because they didn't want to upset you at that point? No, they, they yeah. keep you in a, in a room, is what, what I heard. They keep you in a dark room yeah. so you don't stimulate your brain, so the swelling go down and... The, the thing I, I, I just feel fortunate, you know. Yeah. Doctors, you said you were blessed. No, I was blessed when I was born. We all are blessed. No, you were blessed because doctors gave you less than a two percent chance of living. I mean, this yeah, is but serious God stuff. God gave me a second chance. He did. You said that when you were uh, unconscious, and, and and first of all, it, the thing I, 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 I this is I'm really curious and about I, this. And I, I if really it gets don't too talk morbid, about it. I, I understand. I really don't talk about it. But let me ask him. Did you feel any? I know after you wake up, you're in pain. But th when when you come that close to death. And the actual incident happens. Do you feel any pain whatsoever? Because that always freaks me no, out. Like well, if my I always... wife said that. Um, I tried a couple of times. I tried to get out the bed. They, they had right. me, and I didn't even know my 
my femur was pulverized. I got a titanium rod in my leg for life, mm. from my knee to my hip. Mm. But 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 you little know, screws, pins, screws. No, in not, them, yeah. they not little. <laughs> Trust me, I got the X-rays at my house. Wow. So wow. I, it was bad, and just the trauma to my head was kind of bad, and you know I broke every bone in my face. She said my face was this big. Wow. And she, she was really scared. But you don't feel any pain good. when the actual accident happens? Like do you like? A, you don't I, even I know, know you there. Like if I fell out of a building no, or no. you don't feel any of that. I didn't I don't remember none of it. Your brain shuts down. That's what the brain does. It goes into protection mode. Tracy, everyone And you don't want to remember it. Tracy, everyone wants to know when did you jerk off for the first time? Oh so, my god. When did it happen? That was going on in the hospital. Uh, oh, you really? I was, yeah, all I did was masturbate. I beat my <laughs> dick like they owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> my dick got a restraining order. Is that out really of my true? Hand. Is that true? Yes. When you come that close to death. I woke up one morning and my dick was dialing 911. <laughs> Spousal abuse. <laughs> for real. The nurse, my heart machine started going off one day and the nurse is on the floor. They started running to my room. When they open the door, I was in there beat my dick. Is that really true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, but but I mean when I you're in the, cover. when you're in that bad of shape, and I imagine the pain is tremendous when your leg is all fucked up and everything and you that can't, ain't got nothing to do with beating off. Right. Man. Beating off relaxes. You can beat off through pain and all that really? shit. Really? Yes. But when you're in a hospital, aren't you afraid to beat <laughs> off? Afraid of what? And afraid that someone's gonna walk <laughs> you in. You gotta do what you walk gotta in, do. They all came walk in is better. Uh, if you walk in, it's better. That's my fantasy. <laughs> so turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Around. Pink uh, panties, pink uh, panties. Uh, Come on, man. Did you bored. say? Did you say? I only beat off because I was bored. Did you say that your physical therapist? Then you had a great team of oh doctors. Oh my God, she had a grande culo. I know, but you're. Oh my God, what did she have? So a grande culo. Yeah. Did, did oh your, my God, she was six one, blue your, eyes, blonde hair, big titties. Your, but they were real because they shagged a little bit. They you, were real. You said your therapist. I like big saggy titties. <laughs> you said, old lady titties. <laughs> you said your old. Oh, lady titty nipples big nipples oh lady titty like tater tots <laughs> oh big old yellow old yellow oh, tracy my God. you've said that your therapist looked like a young raquel welch i mean yeah, that's did. dangerous around she a man looked like, like you. she swallowed a young black girl from harlem <laughs> walking down eighth <laughs> avenue <laughs> be serious oh, about God. something yeah. that I, I i do take okay. seriously because what there are very few people i know and God bless you, Tracy. I love you. I want to, first of all, I want to be serious for one second. I love you, and I want you to know I was so fucking worried about you because, uh, you know, at first I was like, how serious is this? And when I got word from a couple of people who are on the inside, they said, man, this is the real deal. I mean, he might go. I was gone. And then I didn't hear from anybody for a while, and I kept calling people, and I tried reaching out to you, and of course, you know, listen, you had your hands full. But I, I really am just so happy you're with us. And you Thank know, you. you've I always you been too. such. I, a, I love you, and you've been such a good friend to the show. I want you to know that, and uh, I, I thank God you're here. Thank God, right? Yeah. And uh, I was so upset, and I, 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 you know, you're just such a funny guy, and you, and you, and you, and you're such an upbeat kind of guy. I remember sitting with you at a Nick game, and just you were carrying on like a lunatic. And I went, "This guy isn't doing this to get paid right now. He's just having I, a good let time." Let me tell you something, man. It's going to yeah. take more than 18 wheels to get that away from me. Yeah. I'm still that dude. Was it I'm hard to be funny, funny again, though? Because I was worried. I had other things on my mind. It was beyond show business at the, in the beginning. Right. It was beyond show business. It was life and death. I was looking at my daughter. My daughter was young. She was 10 months old when it happened. I know. She's three now. My right. wife is young. My wife, 18 years. My sons. It was, I was worried. I, I, I didn't know. Yep. Uh, I, being a, in, a, in the bathroom in the morning and burgundy blood just start running down my face. Oh. You know, so you worry about things like that. And, and, and you, then, you, I then, I, you know, I was so depressed because I just was seeing everybody and I was getting better because I was working hard with the therapist and the speech therapist. And these are beautiful ladies. I love everybody that, that saved my life. So I met, I did a show in New Brunswick a couple of months ago. And Laura sat with me in. I did a show for the hospital because it was right across the street at that theater. Uh huh. And 200 people, they, they gave me a standing ovation at the end. And I asked everybody to please stand up if you were in that hospital. And 200 people stood up. I said, give them the standing ovation. Right. Mm. So your them first, it. Your and first then I show met was... the first responder. He's a 23-year-old white dude, uh -huh. young boy, uh -huh. was the one that pulled me out the van at night. Wow. I met him. He sat right next to me. He's been seeing a doctor for two years. 
He's, his mother whispered in my ear, he was covered from head to toe in your blood. Wow. Is uh, it, When they take you out of Big an accident. Big shots to my man Todd. I was driving that night. And Todd, who was driving. Ty. Another, yeah. Ty. When, uh, Him and his man Ed. Yeah, I mean, even even the way they the, the doctors know how to remove you from a terrible accident scene because they could fuck you up even more if they don't do it just right. Am I correct? Yeah, Everybody yeah. was a professional around you. Well, the those medical, are the EMT, Artie was the first the one out of the truck. Yeah, the yeah. Artie was in. A, Artie Fuqua was in. He was in a coma with me. Right. And Jeff still. Jeff. Um, Jeff, my assistant. Yes. Malay. He was in a coma too, and wow. I asked. For I knew when I was ready to come back because there are layers to forgiveness. Yeah, I had to start with myself because I asked everybody to be there that night. Yeah, now you 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 described you, my talk. In other words, you felt guilty because you were, and, and of course you weren't, but I understand it. You're, you're you're going to do a show, and you said to your pals, "Hey, come with me." You even invited your wife yeah. to come, who's well, now your no, wife. No, 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 she wasn't. I didn't invite her. Right. My daughter was ten months old. She was she was teething. Right. And so she had a toothache. So I told my wife the night before. Don't come. I said, yo, baby, stay here. Thank God. Because she was with me the whole tour. Mm. Mm-hmm. Her and the baby was with me the whole tour except for that night. Wow. And so that's do- my trauma. That's my Vietnam that I live with and struggle with. Every day when I first came home was bad. It Why was is bad. that a struggle? Because uh- I would keep them like this. Mm-hmm. And my wife would fight me. Like, you can't do this. What? She, you were hugging your wife very uh, tightly? No, no. It was a, it was a, I didn't want them go nowhere. I want them with me. Because mm-hmm. what happened? And you wanted to watch over them. No, they care. They got to live. Yeah. Yeah. Just to the supermarket. Don't go. I'm going. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so, so. But now it's getting better. Yeah. Now it's getting better. But Tracy was lucky that you, you said to your no wife. Luck. It was lucky Don't though. Don't say lucky to me. I'm saying, but Don't wait a second. Don't mention that word luck to okay. me. Okay. It was fortunate Thank that you. your wife stayed home luck that night. Luck is for people in Atlantic City and Vegas. Right. For losers. Uh, it was fortunate that she stayed home that night, right? Yeah. And Less, yeah. Yeah. And, and. Hi, and, my daughter. Yes. And you say you described guilt because uh, the comedians and stuff who were with you were there by your invitation. Jimmy Mack was my OG. I know that was your guy, your mentor. My OG, right? Sixty-two years old. So he was the uncle that I never had. When I was acting crazy, he would pull me to the side. Let me talk to you, young blood. Right. Let me pull your coat, young blood. He was a talented comedian himself. Yeah, very. He was one of my facilitators on tour that night, writing. Uh, yeah, he had written a joke for you, and you said, "Hey, why don't you come to the show so you can see me work and this it joke out?" Worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. What was the we joke? Got breaks. I forget. It was uh, it was when um, what's the guy that owned the Clippers? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh Donald that guy. Sterling. Yeah. Donald I Sterling. Forget. Yeah. It was. It, I forgot. So the Jimmy joke. had written you a joke about Donald Sterling, and you said, "Hey, let's go work this joke yeah, out live yeah, that's and see what if we're it, doing. to see if it flies." That's what we were doing. Yeah. What were you in a limo or were you in one of those big vans like uh, the Sprinters, the big the, sprint. the, the Sprint? If we wasn't in that, we'd have been squats like accordions. Mm. Yeah, because those Sprints are those. The I didn't know are the that big. dude was up. Yeah. So a year later, I didn't know he was up for 28 hours. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the guy who was driving the Walmart truck. Well, you know. Um, That's a real danger in our country, actually. It pointed out something. I mean, well, a lot of truck drivers. Cell phone use and all of those things. Cell phone use. So many distractions uh-huh. while you're driving a, eye, a piece of iron like that. Yeah. And a lot of truck drivers uh, are up for a tremendous amount of hours. You can't do that. No. It, it, it costs a good man his life. You yeah. can't do You got to rest. Could you ever forgive the driver? Could you ever say. One day I pray to God all the time right. for the strength to do that. Right. Just the strength. I don't ask for nothing else. Right. Just the strength. My reward isn't the, with, with, you know, I, it was more than money and all of that. It was justice mm. for Jimmy, mm. for all those involved. Yeah. It was just justice I was seeking. Yeah. I wanted justice for the families, Artie and Jeff. They never did nothing to nobody. Right. So it was justice. By the way, speaking of, uh, I know you can't talk about the amount of money you received uh, from uh, Walmart, and uh, it's irrelevant to me, but I know it was a lot of money. Um, uh, you, you know, it, it, it's a thing. The money, though, never can really make up for the, Can't make the up shit you went through. It I won't. mean, when you wake up blind and you are in a coma for all that time, now you've said... It uh, scared me because I... When I think about my daughter now, mm-hmm. growing up without me. Would have been a disaster. You can't, money can't fix that. No. When I think about Jimmy, with the fun we used to have on the phone at night, just telling each other jokes. That's gone. Yeah, he lost his life. Yeah, but he promised me when he was alive that he wouldn't leave me, and I, I believed him. Right. I know he up there with my dad, my grandmother, and all of them now. So my reward isn't monetary. Mm-hmm. My reward is not in this world. 
my reward is when he welcomed me into his kingdom. And I see all of them again. Yeah, uh, Tracy. I treat people here. Mm -hmm. I'm good to people. I'm good to myself. Tracy, you're and very. That's what's important. To you're me. a very right. spiritual man. Do you you do believe that when you were in the coma for eight days, you saw your father? Your father died when you were 19. I don't know if I was in the coma or in or out. I just remember that vision. Of your dad? Yeah, dreaming, whatever. He had an all green. What did he say to you? I'm not ready. That said, you're not I'm ready. I'm not ready. Right. No, he said he was he's not, not ready. ready. Oh, he's, he's not, not ready. ready for me. Right. And I just was crying. When you when you uh, wake up, and uh, you know suddenly you, you know you're in the hospital, you're in a you, you can't walk, you right, you can't move, you you can't see. I remember those days laying in the hospital bed, Robin, and just looking out the window at night, just looking out the window. Mm -hmm. I remember one particular night when it was raining. I was just laying in the hospital bed at about two in the morning. And, I, and just just looking out the window. Do you? Uh, I looked at this show during my recovery mm -hmm. a lot. The fun we had. Yeah, we did. Yeah. The fun we had. I looked at every episode for a year, over wow. and over and over. Were you afraid that you could never get back to the Tracy that like we knew? Like, was there a doubt in your mind that you might yeah. not you might not have the ability Say to speak? Say seeped in a little bit. Yeah, because but I know God ain't an Indian giver. I just had to be in front of people. But when you can't walk and your memory's all fucked up from the accident and you can't speak, you have to literally go into uh, years of like years of therapy. You're probably still in physical therapy. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to learn how to walk again. But it's the mental and emotional. I realized that that crash turned me into an emotional wreck. But the yeah. doctor said to you, you try getting hit. Anybody out there listening? You try to get him by a truck doing that fat, going that fast with eighty-five thousand pounds of food food in the back. Watch what it do to you. Oh. It's gonna turn you into a wreck. And I had to, my wife and my dad had to calm me down. Mm -hmm. Like we here, you here, just you funny, just calm down. My wife said, like when I first was able to say things, she said the first thing I said to her, I whispered in her ear, "There's freedom beyond," because I wanted to get out of the hospital. <laughs> I said, "There's freedom outside the doors." <laughs> Did you ever feel bad like you? The taking... first person that was there was my business, my business manager, Mark Landsman. He didn't have his business manager hat on. Right. It's a friend of mine. Right. And he took care of me and my family in there. Oh, I bet. I bet you, if you oh realize who your real you friends are. You realize who Mark your friends Lansman, are. Mark yeah. Lansman, I love Mark Lansman so much. Because he don't know. Yeah. Him and Louis K., my publicists, they, they're friends of mine. They're way beyond business. In other words, business. you saw that they were true friends. Yeah. You learn who your friends are. Do you feel guilty that, like, do you say to your wife, don't worry, you know? I just didn't want you to go through it, Howard. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry that you went through that, Robin, because we're friends. Mm -hmm. I consider right. us friends. And when you hurt, when a friend of yours is, like, hurt like that, and I'm sorry. Well, I you don't have to. Well, we understood. I was we afraid. Understood. I was afraid you were pissed off at me or something. Oh, I didn't stop know. It, no, I mean, because I, I figured, well, I'm going to write Tracy. I'm going to. I didn't want you to talk about the seatbelt thing, though. Because in the police report, it said they didn't know if we had hours on. And it didn't matter. Because if somebody's doing that 65 miles per hour... Seatbelt doesn't well, matter. It doesn't. It, those yeah. seatbelts would have killed us. Possibly, right? You it don't know. killed us. Yeah. Cut us right in half. D what saved us was that he woke up at the last second and tried to turn left. Mm. That's ah. when we got hit. And we started rolling. Rolled down, right down the ditch. And while we were rolling, while we were rolling, I figured God was floating in the air. And he looked at us. Because three of us went to Tacomas and one died instantly. Mm. And he said, you, you, and you, stay here. Mm. You come with me. Did, and that's did, what happened. Mm. You know, I know I know. before the accident. It's you, hard for me to talk about this. I see. I, I know. It's I very understand. hard. I me. understand. To just really, I'm used to just being funny. and But I know this is a different show right now. Right. Because of what happened. Because yeah. of what happened. No, I got no. plenty of time to be funny. I I understand that. What about, what about um, your relationship with your mom? Did anything change? I know we've talked many well, times. My mom went. My mom came and see me. She did that night. Her, my brother, my sister, and then my mom told TMZ that her, and my wife, had an argument, and my wife wouldn't let her see me. Oh. And my wife is a beautiful person. My wife is nothing like that. My wife is a very kind person, uh -huh. very kind-natured person. Yes. So I don't know why my mom did that. I just don't know why. 
you know, I don't you know, know Tracy, why. it seems no matter. I was on my deathbed. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. She had enough to deal with. She had a 10-month-old baby, and she's we were about to get married. Mm -hmm. That set us back a year and change. Tracy. We're married now, though. Yeah, because uh, you know you've said you, you've you've been very open about the fact that you and your mom don't talk and all that kind well, of stuff, and it's not good. So I thought maybe this accident would have, would have brought, brought us closer. Yeah, and instead she spoke to TMZ, and that fucks your head up more, yeah, right? Well, you don't you don't want to take cell phones and then stuff, and you don't do that. <gasps> don't do that, no. Well, people have done that. Oh my Look at goodness. Look Bobby Brown's daughter and all of that. Yeah, well, wow. uh, your mom so didn't pictures. do that to you, no, though. No, my mom wouldn't do that. No, but you, you, you resent the fact that she spoke to TMZ about... About yeah, my wife. About your yeah. wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it, uh, so that relationship probably is just never going to be on track, I guess. You know, who knows? I don't know. I got hit by a truck. Right. You're fine. My wife, yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. And everything's mm. good. Yeah. And one day that'll either work itself out or not. Yeah. My, my whole family came to see me when I came out the coma. Uh-huh. Just to tell me they love me. Yeah. Except for my grandma. You know, like every other old black woman, all she cared about is education. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Grandma, I made it. I survived. She said, good. Now you go back and get your GED. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Grandma. Uh -huh. I made some of my stuff. I was on 30 rocks. She said, if you had your GD, you'd have been on 60 rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that inspired you to get out of the bed, even though you were racked with pain, you couldn't walk. My daughter. It, it was watching your 14 month old daughter at the time learn how to walk. And you said, I'm going to learn how to I walk. I was home. Yeah. I was in my wheelchair. And, and I was in my wheelchair. Did you have to wear a diaper? Were you like, so were you, were you, yeah. you, you able to go to the bathroom? Oh, yeah, no. Nah. Big shots to the dudes that clean my bed when I saw myself in the hospital. I love you, big dudes. Is that the worst part of it? Like he say, I don't well, want anybody. Dignity wise. Yeah, dignity wise. Yeah, but it was bigger than that, man. I didn't care about that. Yeah, you don't think about you that don't? at that time. I didn't time. care about that. Yeah. I, 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 I never know what. I didn't care about that, man. Right, Come on, right, Howard. Right. I didn't care about that. That's petty. Is it? Compared to what I was going through? I know. But I'm just like, I I, am, I don't want anybody Come doing on. anything for you me. You never shitted on yourself? No. no what are you doing when you're a child? Okay. Come in on. kindergarten, it was an accident. Sure. Yeah. You had accidents? You had accidents, man. I had an accident. <laughs> you poop poo on I, yourself. I buried my underwear in my backyard. <laughs> I know you probably <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but now, now, what about go, go back? Go back to the sex for a second. Masturbation Yo, occurs. Dude, uh, masturbation. My first time. Yeah. Oh my god! I came when I was ready to go. How long? I went. I felt like I was back in high school. My dick got hard like was, I had one of my high school hard on. How I'd long? Break brick with that dick. What Tracy, that? here you've been through a horrible accident. You have to learn how to walk again. You have to learn how to see again. You have to learn how to talk again. Right. right. I mean, you're a guy who relies yeah. on talking yeah. as a way of. Uh, yeah. you know, and they weren't sure if you had brain damage. They're still not sure what the fuck happened. Right. Yeah. Right. You might have some brain damage, but I don't see any any indication of it. Well, you know, when you take a bump like that on your head, it's never always the same. Know, yeah. Do you notice differences? Yeah. You do. In the what times respect? I do. I know when you do stand up Just now. Timing. It's hard for you to stand sometimes, up. Yeah. Timing. Right. My balance. You know things, but I work. I work hard. Yeah. I work hard. I work. I work on. And I'm, you can re. Root all of that stuff in that's the, brain. the brain. That's what the brain does. That's what the brain does. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. totally correct. It rewrote. But don't you routes. think you were able to reroot because you you had such drive to get back? You, you in other words, you could retire now. You have so you have so much money. The first responder yeah. said to me, "Go ahead." When he when he first took me and they pulled me out, he was the first one to touch me. Mm -hmm. He said, "Dude, you was covered in blood. You you was I'm going." Yeah. I mean, they, he so then he had some other guys pull me out. And he said, when we pulled you out, you started swinging. So I'm thinking that's just nerves. He said, why was you? I said, why was I swinging like that? Right. He said, you was fighting for your life. Oh, wow. Fighting you were unconscious, and yet your arms were doing Man, this involuntary listen, sort of response. I had a kidney transplant. I got diabetes. Yeah. Been through a lot of wars, man. I ain't ready. I'm fighting, man. I fight. But Tracy, let me ask you something. When you go through something like what you went through, which very few people go through, do, in a way, do you take better care of yourself now? Like, are you watching your diabetes? Are you being more careful? Watching my diabetes, man. I got a pump, man. Let me see that pump. 
Oh, look at that. What is that doing? That's I got pumping. A pump, man. I got a monitor, man. Wow. So now, it monitors his blood sugar and gives him what he needs. I got my blood needs. sugar on my phone, man. Yeah. Does that I'm mean Bluetooth. Does that mean that you're taking that care of That means I'm trying to live, man. You appreciate life more. Fuck that. Yeah. That means I'm trying to live. Are you going to church I ain't now? Getting, no, I ain't doing that. You're Come not on, doing I'm that, still right. a trade bag, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? No I'm church spiritual. will take you. <laughs> they ain't taking me, yeah, man. Right. They, let me tell you something. Yeah. With all the goodwill and shit I got going, on now, so you I really must do. have did something. Yo, Robin, I tapped into something. You're, the love for Tracy, you, the Tracy, love for you but, was overwhelming, right? Maybe I did something beautiful yeah. in the last life. Yeah. Maybe I gave Jesus some water. T- Tracy. Maybe, maybe something like that. Maybe you were one of those guys. Helped him cr- carry maybe that I, yeah, but, I think I right. was the one that punched Judas in the motherfucking there mouth. You, go. you fucking snitch. <laughs> but Tracy. You fucking snitch. Tracy, there you go. isn't it true that uh, with all the goodwill you're getting, when you uh, my find... dick got bigger too. Uh, d- just your the dick head. Got... <laughs> no, the head is more bulbous. No, the, the just head. Just the head. The head of your dick looks more bulbous Yo, because. Oh man, when the when the therapist coming came, I I start going to my therapy in boxer shorts. Yes. And one day I had a wardrobe malfunction. Uh oh. The dick head popped out, <laughs> and the mouth of my dick was grinning at her. <laughs> Isn't it because you lost weight that your dick appears bigger? Honestly, uh... ain't got nothing to do with it. Really? I had a big dick. I remember it was medium size. I was nine and a half inches before, but now it was, it was like about eleven. Your dick was nine and uh, you down to my serious? kneecaps. Down to my kneecaps. I have to see that one day because I, I think real. I think you should have given him physical therapy. <laughs> he gave some physical therapy. When he your therapist, gave therapy. you describe a situation where you're wearing boxer shorts, your dick falls out of your shorts. And the therapist gasped. In other words, was like, "Oh my God!" Yes, this is a, and, yes. uh, and so, so your dick got bigger. Yeah, Mr. That's Morgan, what she said. Uh, excuse me. That's yes. what she said. Uh, yeah, I know she might be pregnant too because the club got shot up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shooting the club up. But Tracy, you talk about I'll goodwill. Pull out. Tracy, uh, John Holmes never pulled out. Tracy, when you pu- talk about goodwill, which you've had a lot of, right? But some people are still shit faces, right? Because. When, when you got out and then you were driving... For your... those shit faces, I asked them one question. Go ahead. You'd have took that fucking hit for me? Mm-hmm. Now, when you were driving... You'd have took that hit for me? Tracy, when you were driving, you, you were driving, you have a Lamborghini. It's a very beautiful car. Uh, you're driving it, and some guy pulled up next to you and started giving you some bullshit, right? No, he didn't pull up next to me. He was right was there it? on the sidewalk. What did he and say did he to you? Say? He just said, um, you know, this is bullshit. You just on Matt Lauer. Crying now, you got a fancy car. This is bullshit. And I parked the car and I approached him and I asked him, I said, You'd have took that hit for me? Mm-hmm. He would look at me because now he's scared. Now right. I'm going to my nigga bag now. Right. And I said, I yelled, I said, You would have took that fucking hit for me? Right. And everybody in the streets there, Cornell Hospital looked. And then I, I got closer and I said, So he shook his head, No. I said, The next time you ever see me, if God bless you to see me again, don't you ever say shit about what I'm wearing? What I'm driving or what I'm saying, I'm going to fucking knock you out. I'm going to hurt you badly. You know, Tracy, it's so true. Because I just got out the hospital. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm living. I'm trying to get my life back. Right. I'm trying to take my life back. And Tracy, you're trying to enjoy you some of your life. you about a fucking car right. and I almost died? Right. You worrying about a car and I almost died. Tracy, it's so true. That's humanity. Yeah. Tracy. That was the lack of it from him. Tracy, it's so true that some people... Most humans, most people that come across me, they don't care about what I'm driving or what I'm wearing. They're just happy, happy I'm here. Happy to see you, yeah. They're just happy I die. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that... Most people! Isn't it amazing that sometimes people get jealous of a guy who... In a oh, way, what are you supposed to you drive got, after you in an accident? No, but wait a second. You get People get jealous because... In a way, you're getting all this attention, and they're people who don't get attention, and they want they they want to put you down for living. All the comedy I've done, and you want to pay attention to my accident? Right. <laughs> I get it. That's why I'll be on the low. That's why I'll stay in the crib. Right. I ain't looking for that. Mm-hmm. I ain't looking for that, man. I ain't getting this for that. Yeah, you're right. I wanted to start and walk Hollywood. I achieved my, my legacy. Right. Have you become more reclusive? As a result yeah. of, of what people say. Yeah, and, I think so. Yeah. You, you spend most of your time I'd, at home. I'd rather be soothing, have a soothing life. I listen to my music. You know what I'm saying? My Johnny Mathis and all the things that I was going to say, what are you listening Bob to? Bob James, Bob James, you know, Taxi, the theme song for Taxi. Johnny Mathis is one of theme the most soothing. The theme song from Taxi? The yeah. theme song from Fa- Taxi? Yeah, is that right? 
But yeah. but Johnny Math is one of the most soothing voices, right? Come on, the voice. Yeah. I just I just relax my mind so my mind doesn't keep going. Uh huh. So get back to your health for a second, and we'll get to the sex in a minute. But did you did you give up any vices? In other words, did you when you said, "Hey, I lived." How would I been clean for twelve years? You know that. No, but you know what I mean. All of a sudden, you're thinner. Are you watching everything you no, eat? My porno. I need my porno. Yeah, no, vices, no, I'm not talking about porno. that. I'm talking about. I'm just what saying. are these vices what you want him vices to give? You want me to say? I'm just saying. In other words, you're taking care of yourself in a new way. You're appreciating life. You're but not. But I did that before the accident. I see. But I, I don't know. You look way healthier now. You look. Yeah. Well, I, when I came out the hospital, I was two thirty. That's right. Now I'm one not one ninety three. That's what I'm talking about. Now, how are you losing the weight? Are you watching everything no, you low eat? No carbs. Yeah. Do you work I really, out? My, 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 I don't say the word diet. I just say change the lifestyle. Yes. And I'm. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm in, I was in the supermarket, so my change of lifestyle starts there. Right. But I put my car, how many carbs? I cut down on them carbs. All right, mm -hmm. so now get I back. I did the Alec Bowen diet. Cut down on them carbs. Right, man. that'll do it, won't it? Yeah, right. Alec told me that a long time ago, but I wasn't really listening. Right. Then I said, then it dawned on me what he was saying, and it worked. Yeah, so but you know you, Alec, Alec has his hand in the bread basket when everyone's uh, all to the good. Yeah, I, had, I had a coffee cake last night. Who reached out to you? Was it Lorne? Does Lorne Michaels? The first person that made me laugh was Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy when I was reached in the out. Hospital. He came to see you? Yeah, no, he didn't. We both have the same biz, um, business manager, Mark Landsman. Yes. ML Management. Yes. And I was, I was, you know, medicated. I was maybe out the coma two weeks, but I was still, you know, in and out. And he said, Eddie Murphy, want to talk to you? And I spoke to Eddie, and Eddie said some stuff on the phone to me, and I started laughing. But I couldn't <laughs> laugh really hard because when yeah. I laughed really hard, it hurt. That but is I got to tell him I loved him for that when we gave him the Mark Twain Award. I told him that directly. I saw you do that. Because I love Eddie. Mm. By the way, with Eddie, uh, you know, he reached out to you. That's a difficult phone call to make because you don't know, from Eddie's viewpoint, he doesn't know whether to joke with you. He just told me to get better. Right. He said, take time off and just heal up. Right. Take your time. You, you, the world Take will still be there, right? Yeah. Did you worry about stuff like that? Did you sit there in Every the hospital day. and say, is the world forgetting about well, me? What really affected me was when I was in my wheelchair. And when I first came home, I was in my wheelchair. My daughter, one of my daughter, she was a baby. So when I would pick up, she would start crying. And I started to take it personal. Mm. Then my wife had to tell me, Tracy, she's just scared of the chair. She's a yeah. baby. That's right. She's 11 months, 12 months old. She's scared of the chair. And I understood. Mm -hmm. But at 14, I got to see her walk that night. Mm. And I got out the chair myself. I Good. started walking. I wanna, And I, my motivation for getting better, I didn't want to walk my wife down the aisle with no cane. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody want to be in a cane. Nobody want a cane. It, 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 in other words, you had to teach yourself to walk, and and when you when you learn how to walk, even now when you're it's, doing stand up, it's difficult sometimes right. living all this stuff. You need to sit down sometimes on stage, right? Because it's yeah. what is it? Just painful to stand up after yeah, a while. Yeah, leg starts. Yeah, hurt a little bit. My hip. So 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 get back to the sex for a second. Well, you, as long as I'm funny, as long as the, as long as the sense of humor ain't hurting, I'm good. No, your sense of humor <laughs> always yeah, yeah. You can't you lose that. You don't even that. notice that I'm sitting down. You, can, you can't lose that. Because of the shit man. I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, but listen. to the good. So far, all I'm hearing is you're down 40 pounds, your dick grew two inches, <laughs> your dick got yeah, hard. Yeah, this is all good. Your yeah. dick got hard and more bulbous. <laughs> you got Yo, a high school hard on. You're like the fucking came. You're like the bionic man. You remember when you came in high school? <laughs> you, you pulled out, you came, and she shot across the room. Dude, I'm getting. Getting ready. I'm getting ready to be run over if I can get two more inches yeah, on my I, dick. I had a William Tell dick. I could knock an apple off a motherfucker head from 20 feet oh, William, away. You have William it's Tell dick. It's a new dick. Olympic William event. Tell. William Tell dick. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's but a new just, Olympic event. But yeah, here's, what, here's the thing. Tracy, in a way, I'm sure that did the doctors say to you, listen, don't fuck your wife. You wait until Did you're tell you at that? a certain point. Or they you, had to tell me that. They didn't have to tell you that. I Did, was healing, man. How, yeah. how, that wasn't important for me and her. Right. Tell me at what happened. Point, we right. together. How many weeks? We together. She's yeah. a rider. Yeah. Tracy. How, Megan Morgan is a rider. Tracy, how many weeks do you wait before you attempt sex with your wife? And now, you know, you got the I can't even remember, man. I, it was, I was, I had to, first I had to really, really, really just get rid of the fear, the anxiety. How you going to focus on that when this big thing just happened to you yeah and your arm and you see cuts all over me from the glass yeah, because i know guys who have had heart attacks 
And then they go, I'm afraid to fuck. I'm afraid to eat. I'm afraid to... You're afraid. You're afraid afraid everything's going to kill you. Are you kind of over that part or will you always sort of have that? I freak out on the highway sometimes. Yeah. When I'm driving. You you drive drive yourself. I drive now. Yeah. I bought the Ferrari. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... When I'm driving with someone and someone else is driving, I freak out. Oh. Are you buying some crazy shit now because you do have a lot of money? And not that that's any consolation, but are you driving the Ferrari. I understand the house. He had crazy cars Did, before. I know, but the Ferrari. And now you got a bigger house, right? I mean, yeah, you bought mansion. you bought Alpine. a mansion. Uh, yeah. How's that? You got you got every... Well, we, 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 uh, we, we gutted it. Right. I gutted it from head to toe. I just gutted it. Now, why I do that? I bought it last June. But then you got to move out while they fix it, right? Well, I still got my other crib. Right. And so yeah. now this new place is crazy, right? I'll be, yeah. It's, yeah, I got a bowling alley and all. If you got the bowling alley. All of that, yeah. Are you, are you, are you I got bowling? some paper. I got, I got a little hour story paper. <laughs> are, you, are you able to uh, bowl? Uh, I bought my project. <laughs> you bought, <laughs> you bought <laughs> everywhere. Pro- yeah, I'm trying to sell it now. These motherfuckers don't want to pay no rent. Yeah. I know I bought a project. For, 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 come on, Did man. Did you do that when you got Everybody on welfare? Come on, man. But, but Tracy, is that true? I get no paper. Tracy, is that true? When you got the money, you bought your project, and you said, "Hey, everyone got to pay rent to me." Yes. Is that true? And and, yes. and no well, one will pay you rent. Pay rent. Yo, one lady was like, "Oh, uh, she, she snapped the teeth and shit." <laughs> <laughs> I ain't paying rent in years. So you invested yeah. uh, some of your money in the projects. Which... I don't even know what the fuck Section Eight is. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! Give me this paper, say Section Eight. And people tell fuck, me now. Some money. <laughs> people tell me now you're flying a lot of private. Uh, All I do is fly private, baby. Wow. G four staff. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Are you able to? Would you be able to go on? I mean, I know you're on the uh, on the tour now. You're on the picking up the pieces. Will you be able to go on a tour bus, or would that freak you out too much? What, at this point? What, what would is, you be able to go on a tour bus? A and what? Like, a tour bus. What is that? Oh, I oh, see. Oh, you don't know what that is. <laughs> No, but seriously, I'm a man. I, I mean, it, wouldn't it be uh, like a flashback to be in a bus on tour uh, doing? Not if you own the bus, right? Right. That's on a different level. Yeah, I see. So you're able to do that. I go to the store, and get on a G4. Would you be able to go to Walmart and shop, or would you say fuck that? When I, I was in that wheelchair, I still shopped at Walmart. No shit. <laughs> you still can't beat their prices. Yeah, right. <laughs> After my settlement, everything went up a penny. <laughs> So talk about your William Tell dick. Your dick now is big. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're recovering from a horrible accident that everybody you got knows a hook about. Now too, the hook, that left hook. Were you self-conscious when you first <laughs> go out? Love a hook, dick. Tracy, were you self-conscious when you first went out in public after the accident? My because... dick is so big, got hair on it. <laughs> it does have hair on it. <laughs> wow, it's <laughs> got its own ecosystem. Again? But when when you first go out in public after the accident, after you're starting to recover. Right. Uh, are you self-conscious? Like, are you like everyone staring yeah, me at me? Yeah, me and my wife. Me, me and my wife. Yeah. Me and my wife. Because you describe even me when you Me and my did... wife wouldn't leave the house for months. But we even stayed when... indoors, literally. Yeah. The maid would go to the supermarket. We stayed indoors for five months. And then I just said, I got angry. Mm. I said, fuck that. If I'm going to Macy's to buy a shirt, then I'm just buying a shirt. Because all cameras were constantly. Right. But you ain't going to stop that. You can't stop that. Everybody got camera phone. I can't, but I got to live. Right. Then that's when I began, like after seven, eight, ten months, I started to take my life back. I need my life back. I got to live. Tracy. Yeah, when, you got to normalize your I life gotta at live. a certain point. Tracy, you're yeah. out on tour. It's going to yeah. be hard for my wife, for my daughter, my son. Yeah. Tracy. Because I'm, I'm the king. I'm the leader. If I'm acting abnormal and shit, what is going to do for them? They need leadership. Right. So, you should buy an island, by the way. I was thinking about it. I don't you. buy no fucking island. Well, come on. Look, Long Island? Then Long you Island. Swim <laughs> down <with Charlotte. laughs> then then you got to put your own Walmart on the island. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tracy, <laughs> you're out on tour right now. Was there a point where you said, fuck it, man, I'm leaving stand-up comedy? I would think like... I thought about retirement. Forget stand-up. I thought about suicide, man. Really? Oh. I was that damaged in the hospital, man. <laughs> I didn't want to live. I saw me. It you wasn't there. You, you wasn't didn't think there. it would, you I could come back. I, come on, I couldn't talk. I, I was struggling to say words. Yeah. Right. I couldn't walk. So I got it, a wound on my ankle, the front of my left ankle, man, that looked like a horseshoe. Mm. You could pull my skin back and see my bone. So what's the motivation? I'm diabetic. Tracy, what's the motivation to go out and do stand-up? Because you're on tour now, picking up the pieces. What was tour. the motivation? You're going to be performing at Carnegie Hall on Saturday, November 5th. What was the motivation? What is the motivation? Like, to like go back. The motivation was a lot of things. It was seeing other stand-ups. It was knowing that I love stand-up. You it do love it. Family. 
Yeah. It was my wife mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. It was my wife mostly. I started, I got real depressed and I gained weight. And then after the settlement, I was still depressed. I was still in that mindset. And I'm laying on the couch, just laying on the fucking couch one day. And my gut, and she's looking at me like this. And then one day she just said, why don't you get up and go to the comedy club, you big gut motherfucker? <laughs> That's I good. Said, I'm back. That's good. And, and what she'll happened? talk to you like that. Happened? You're back. Right? And what, back. And what <laughs> happened? She stopped pitying me. <laughs> go, the, go grab the mic. But I remember. What happened when you went? I was went? talking to Lauren Michaels in my car one day. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was on the phone, and I got really emotional with him. He's talking, and I said, Lauren, I want to come home. And he said, trade without blinking. He said, the door's always open. That's right. Like a week later, I got October 17th. October 17th. He when you went on home. Saturday Night Live. When I went home, yeah. that was the first time. The first time was the Emmys. But then I went home. This, the first time the comedy yeah. was at the Emmy. I remember when I, was, I did that joke. Yeah. And Tina, I looked down. Tina was in the front row. And I see Tina. And she, it was in her heart. Mm -hmm. She started crying. I said the joke. She was happy that the comedy was still there. Right. And then I went back and I started doing it at Lauren Michaels. The first time I ever touched the mic since that night was the I went to the pitch meeting at SNL. Did you get nominated for an Emmy for uh, that performance of yeah. uh, coming back on SNL? Yeah. A lot so of, you're nominated. Yeah. A lot of people don't get hit by a car or truck. And come back. Like that in yeah. 14 months later. What was it like being in the 14 pitch? 14 months later. That is amazing. But listen, how, let me finish talking. I was in there at the pitch meeting, and this young cast, all of them, Keenan, Les, all of them, everybody, the cast, the whole cast, was doing it. I know they were doing their hardest pitches, their best pitches, and they inspired me so much. Oh, man, I went, after I left the pitch meeting, I went to, to the cellar, and I grabbed the mic for the first time. For the very first time, it was like a new life, and I did five minutes. You mean because you got so inspired by the pitch by meeting at cast, Saturday Night Live? By that cast, yeah. by that cast, I will always, for always be indebted to that cast for inspiring me to go back and be funny. What was and it? And when I was doing a show, you know, there's a dress show, then there's a uh, a, a live show. a live show. So during the dress show, I got into my own head because you have to have a dresser, somebody grabs you and go take you to right, the next set right. and change your clothes. You, I started to think that the, the audience was looking at me like something's wrong with me because this person is grabbing me. The audience, I started to get in my own head like, like they feel sorry for me. They think I'm Emily in the song. So they think I'm, and then I told Lauren, like, like in between the dress and air, I had to talk with Lauren, me, just me and Lauren. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lauren, I don't know if I could do this, man. I don't know. I don't know because they think something's wrong with me. And Lauren Michaels simply said, Tracy, they don't care about the funny. They just happy you here. In other words, they're staring at they you happy because you here. it's like seeing somebody and who died came and came out, back. During that monologue, and I seen the people stand up for me, and I could see them just clapping and closing their eyes like they were just really happy just that I was here. Nobody wants to see nobody get die like that. Right. Tracy, they by truck. am I reading this right? I think you really now feel like people love you. I think you, it was proven to you through the worst well, situation. God got away. God got away. Do you think in a way? Know, he let you know. You do, loved. Yeah, do you think in a way and you never knew that? it's my job to give it back. Tracy, do you, Maybe. Think, do you think in a way you never really Maybe knew that? Maybe not like this, not on this level. Right. Do you think you could bomb anymore in comedy? I don't think so. That's People love you I'm too thinking. much. That's not what I think about. What do you think about? I think about giving the love back. Right. And and when you went up on stage for five minutes after you know being with the Saturday Night Live people. It was a people, standing ovation I'll never forget. Mm. Right. It was welcome back. Welcome back. And, and, and But I'll never forget it when I went to the Emmys that night. Nobody knew I was there. Right. Nobody. Louis K is my publicist. He's back there. Uh -huh. Him and Don, the executive producer, did a great job of keeping that secret for two months. Right. No one knew you were showing up. And when I went back there, I came back. It was like on my way to the stage. Everybody was looking at me like they saw a ghost. And then Louis said, Trey, even Louis or my agent, Steve Schmook, they were with me. Both of them were with me. And Schmook, matter of fact, it was Schmook. He said, Tracy, they're with Tina. And I walked, and she had her back to me. I said, T. And she turned around and lost it. Wow. And I said, Tina, I'll see you. You got it, because she was getting ready to go present mm -hmm. at the end. And I said, Tina, she just grabbed me, started crying. I said, Tina, stop. I'll see you after you get off. And then I went over there, and I was with my man that was hosting that night. I mean, you're so From close Adam. You're so close to Tina Fey. I mean, yeah, she's the one That's who wrote 30 Rock and everything. Yeah. That's the sister I never had. Yeah. So when I went out, 
and the whole audience just was in shock because I was there. They didn't know I was going to be there. Have you been heckled since the accident? Has anyone had the only balls? Love. Only, only love. love. It's, only it's love. unbelievable. P- only love. And now you're going to be playing Carnegie Hall, and you got to win the Emmy. I mean, you're going to have a hell of a speech. I don't know. Are you going to prepare a speech? It's not about that for me. It's just about I'm here talking to you, Robin, and that it's the right miracle. there overwhelms me. It's a I'm miracle. I'm happy. I'm yeah, I can't believe you're life. back. I'm grabbing you know, I, I haven't bad. seen you in two years. It was bad, because it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad accident. No, I knew that. I, My I, friend Jimmy Mack is with me on his couch right now. And how's I his saying, family now doing? He's saying your name. I, I, well, I, don't, I don't know them. Yeah. But the two sisters, Jimmy Mack, two sisters came to see me at Caroline's. Right. And it was all love. It was, it was a lot of hugs, and I dedicated that show to them. Right. And I told them, their brother's with me for the rest of my life. He with me. He's mm. one of my strongest guardian angels, and I know it. Yeah, what a what a horrible thing and to I'm, go through. You don't know how it. Is there any blessing in it in the sense that you go through something like that and the lessons you learn from? I mean, I, my daughter, my wife, my sons, I love them, and I'm glad that I'm here for them, with guidance, and I'm here. I'm a different person. All right, so so get back to the fucking. Uh, so when your wife yeah. gets on top of you, for, does she? Go, are you on your back, laying oh, on your that back? That was crazy. Now, the first time she got on top of me, my leg, well, my leg was still healing. Your leg was healing. It was you still in pieces. You couldn't do but the I didn't give a fuck. But Tracy, you couldn't do the missionary oh position uh, right off the bat. You can, can't move. So you're on your back. That, that took year. That took about a year, man. Right. It was, you know, it was a lot of, it was, it was just a lot of eating. The first time, a lot of eating. Lot of eating. The lot first eating. time, does she initiate? Or do you say, listen, it's time me. for me to start talking? Of course, talking. me. You started. Yeah. And here you are. You're laying in bed. Your legs are broke. You can't talk. It's all, yeah, you're all fucked up. Yeah, but I was a up. dirty motherfucker. Right. <laughs> I'm an animal. No dirty I'm an talk. animal. And, and no I'm dirty an animal. talk. And when I want some pussy, I want some pussy. I know, but is there a time <laughs> even... I don't care about all that other shit. When you first wake up, do you see... I want some pussy. Come here. I'm rough and aggressive. When you first yeah, wake up leg. from a coma... Get leg over here. <laughs> but when you aggressive. first... But, 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 Slap the ass. But Tracy, when you first wake up from a coma, do you... Do you check your dick to see that it works? I mean, seriously. Well, he had already been masturbating. I should call, ask the doctor that. I need my dick, man. (laughs) Of course. Could you imagine that, Howard? (laughs) Come out of a coma, and the doctor said, Mr. Morgan, your dick was seven. Uh, I said, well, I'm going back in this coma, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck am I doing a lot? I need my dick. My father told me to come back, but he didn't tell me I wouldn't have my dick. Fuck right. Right. If I lose my dick, I got to become a serial killer. Oh, I mean. You snatch a motherfucker up with some clown makeup on. Imagine you completely healed, but no dick. Come on, man. Oh, my All God. All you going to do is scissor and so, bug burn. And, and was your wife shocked that you were able at that point? Because you weren't even walking yet. Shocked were, like a motherfucker. Right. Like she's like, well, Tracy, you could certainly learn to walk if you're fucking already. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I like being pampered, too. All right. Who have we heard from since your recovery? We've heard from Lorne Michaels. We've heard from Tina Eddie Fay, Murphy. Alec Baldwin, I assume, all the cast of 30 Rock. I heard from my audience. You did. And as was they come out, the tour's been very successful. Five, 6,000 people. You mm. told me that. We just that did Cape Cod, 2,200, 2,300. No kidding. Cape Cod. Yeah. It was hot. It was in the tent. Oh, wow. It was wow. hot. Yeah. I said, the Kennedys live right down the block. You motherfuckers can't afford no AC. <laughs> The Kennedys are right down well, the block. Well, Tracy's right. He's out on his picking up the pieces tour, appropriately yeah, titled, right? Pick, yeah, picking, picking up, up the pieces. That's where the picking up the pieces. We about to shoot the uh, the Netflix special in October at oh. the Red Bank mm. Theater. So did you have yeah, to create? It's staying alive. Did you have to create all new staying material? Alive. Did you come have on, to, you come on? If you get out, you got new material it's right there. Is that true, you Tracy? Tap into it. You always say you go. My up whole on, life, I've took with bad things that happened to me and turned it funny. Have you thrown That's out what, your old act? Have you, is your old act gone, and now all of a sudden you just get up on it stage? It ain't about that. It ain't about what material. Is it about? What it's is it about? It's about energy. But, but the energy, Tracy Morgan's still there. Is that really true? You mean to tell it's me true. you go up on stage. Now you've had this accident. The whole world knows about it. You go up and create a whole new act from nothing? I have my facilitators, my dudes that roll with me. Right. You write Come some on, material. You, Come on, man. Every, I'm, I, my, I give my audience more credit than that, man. Right. Everybody know I got hit by that Walmart truck. Man, I'm just avoid not talking about it. Right. Come on. You got all kinds of shit. The therapy. All kinds of shit happened with that. And so you go up there and you tell the story of what happened since the accident. And jerk your sense of humor into it. Right. Because if you don't laugh, you're going to cry. Right. I'm just done crying. 
Yeah. But don't I you just think... got water in my eye right now. Yeah, but... but oh, oh, is that... That's not tears? <laughs> Tracy, don't you think in a way your act now is probably stronger because not only is there comedy, is. but you also have something serious. Is. Something I know it is. life and death kind of shit. I know it is. Yeah. I so, know it is. I tapped into something real different now mm-hmm. that nobody in comedy... Because I don't give a fuck who you are in comedy. How long is you this tour? You ain't never been to the other side and came back. There's all kind of shit happening on the other side. Right. But is there... Know, I went to fucking lunch with fucking Mary Magnus one day. This chick had me sitting next to a glory hole. <laughs> what? Jesus had a dick through the hole. I mean, Jesus, come on, man. Are you now a firm believer in the afterlife? In other words, you've seen it for real. And I only can... know about this life. Right. But I bet you I'm a lot of people... I'm not going to turn this into a sci-fi movie or nothing. Yeah. I only know about this fucking life. I'm sitting right here with Howard Stern and Robin. Come on, man. But on I stage... Fuck out. So, I sound like a dickhead doing that, man. So you're... I was floating around in the 80s. <laughs> Come on, man. I was above he my to body out. looking yeah. down. Nah, see, Tupac. Come on, man. Biggie Smalls lost weight, you know? He got the diabetes under control. I ain't you didn't see thing. Tupac or Biggie? I ain't seen no fucking body. I seen a motherfucker that died owing me money. I seen that motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, people, ass up too. Be, because it's so public that you've made a ton of money here. Uh, are people hitting you up for money a lot now? I mean, listen, I, man, oh, man, white women are looking at me now. <laughs> right, Ooh. you have business you... white women, <laughs> <laughs> women in suits. I might, I, who you think sponsored Donald Trump campaign? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about black people turn on. He supports Trump, and I don't support no fucking. You're politics. so rich now, you have to support Trump. <laughs> I don't fuck with no politics, man. You have you to don't. turn Republican. God is my dude. I keep my faith in God. Will you vote though? Uh, no, you will not. No? Vo- I voted one time in my fucking life, and that was for Dave Dinkins. And we see how that shit turned out. <laughs> it wasn't safe to go down I the street. I was the motherfucker to put the dude on to water brought me. Did, yeah, it was me. Did President Obama? I put the dude on to water brought me. Did President Obama reach out to you at all? Uh, they called me the preppy killer. Yeah, <laughs> did, this big ass dick. You, you gonna kill me with that? Dick? Did President Obama reach out to you at all? Uh, oh, uh, they I'm, said that he said he got on TV and said, um, that's right. Get well, Tracy. Yeah, and that's something. Yeah, I, yeah, I did a couple of correspondence dinners with him. And Look how far it, you've come yeah. in life. With the president of the United the States. The president, right? Is saying, the president hey, is concerned. Well. The president. He heard about your bulbous penis head. Yeah, and he, he did, said, yeah, yeah. that's Take a Take care of that bulbous. <laughs> Why did you call the tour bulbous penis head? <laughs> bulbous must shit look like a mushroom. Women love big dick head. They love big balls and big dick head. Oh, they do, but I wouldn't know. They love some huge ass balls. <laughs> I don't know. But... The women, I'm telling you, you know, the women love huge ass balls. Hey, somebody... He got some big balls. <laughs> Somebody told me that you uh, performed at Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots. Yeah, you, you recently like a motherfucker. He's- really? Oh, come on, you doing a show for a room full of billionaires? You <laughs> stuffy like you a bomb? motherfucker. I didn't even give a fuck. I was happy to be in the room. You mean it, I it see was... the, the CEO of the biggest bank in the universe, J.P. Morgan, sitting right in front of me. <laughs> Think I gave a fuck about making him laugh? That makes him laugh. Tracy, in other words, it was Robert Kraft's 75th birthday but party. Robert Kraft is the dude. Yeah, yeah. they hired you he to be the is comic. The motherfucker, I love Rob. Robert Kraft, Miss Kraft, I love you. Did, gave him a nice gift too. Did 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 him uh, and his son and all of them. He hired you to be the uh, entertainer that night, and you go up and going up in front of billionaires. I got a, some big laughs, though. Did you? I got so why'd you say you bombed? Because of my standards, I'd say I bombed. I see, right? They, they, they're not, and I understand you goofed on Tom. Do they laugh Tom, hard like I, people? I understand you goofed on Tom Brady. Yeah, I said uh, they said he's a Trump supporter. Yeah. I said you better hope your left tackle ain't Mexican, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 he might not be able to get Mexican, into the country. Yeah, right. yeah. Done. Absolutely. So, but so, do they laugh as hard as regular audiences, or is it like evidently oh. not? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, he sounds just like. <laughs> So Tracy, For real. It, I was like, what's wrong with you motherfuckers? And everybody there made their buttholes scrinch. And I said, motherfucker, I'm from the jungle. I'm going to talk my shit like I've been talking it. Well, Tracy, you... I ain't changing. Tracy, you come from the streets. But it was dope because they flew me in on a private jet. We landed in the airport and went in an air, 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 airplane crack, crowd carrier. Oh, my and God. And a party and that shit. You mean you're in the hangar. And, and a hangar. So you landed right at the party. Right at the party. <laughs> but they came back and did Caroline that night. No shit. You're on Dick fire. Kyle, like, yeah, I'm working. I'm working. You're working. And, and, and two and, movies. Is the, well, before you get to the movies, the reason you're working so hard is you want this comedy. In other words, you're going to take it on tour, but you're going to film it, and then 
you're going to go on HBO. What is it for? For HBO? Netflix. For, for Netflix. And they'll release your whole comedy tour. And once they do that, you got to come up with another new act, right? It's all to the good. It's all good. It's all to the good. You live your life. Have you shot the you, special yet? No. When are you going to shoot the special? October 28th. I see. The Red Bank Theater. Why not shoot Jersey. the Carnegie Hall uh, show? You got to wait. Want to. You want to wait. Red Bank is the I'm place. I'm still, I'm still, we, we still putting it together. You're still putting it together. Yeah, I'm still living life. My, my, my material is not something I just write. Mm -hmm. I, that's my experiences. So you're hotter than ever. Now, what are these two movies you're working on? Well, I just finished one with uh, that's coming out in February with Ice Cube and Charlie Day. It's called Fist Fight. Comedy. Out, yeah, comedy. Yeah. Funny, very funny. New Line Cinema. And I just did one with Ed Helms. Oh. And Dito is the director. That's going to be great. It's called The Clappers. I don't know when that's going to be out. Another comedy. And then I'm doing a big movie in February. Who's that for? Uh, it's not, I don't know. I forgot. It's not. Is it? It's huge. It's like $150 million budget. Oh, no shit. Yeah. What, what is this movie about? Do you know? It's, not like, it's called it's an animated live oh. animation. Oh, okay. And we're going to like Budapest for three months. And nice. Then I got another one called uh, Shitheads. Shitheads. That's going to be dope. How's that going into that's the That's going to be funny. That sounds like something I would do. Uh, Yo, listen, the studios is tapping into this new funny. Yeah. <laughs> Trey Bag is back and listen, I'm the I'm the fucking six million dollar nigga, man. Are you, are you the hottest guy in show business right now? Bionic you know? nigga right now. Huh? <laughs> are you the biggest guy in show business? No, now? I'm I mean, just the Desmond Tutu of yeah. show business. Will you do full front <laughs> Tutu. Will you do? I feel uh, magical. <laughs> I feel like I'm related to Uncle Ben or some shit. <laughs> Fuck ain't your mama. I'm a magical nigga. You're like magical. A, uncle, you're in Uncle Ben category. Yeah, my rice never <laughs> stick. Uncle <laughs> Ben's is always fluffy. Will you ever show an audience? Oh, I can't wait to deny you some butthole, huh? Will you? What say, pardon me. I just what? want to say, eat some booty hole, toss some salad. You're gonna eat a, a butthole tonight? Yeah, you got to. You ain't never tossed your wife salad. Fuck no. You better go home and stick your tongue in the crack of her ass. I don't think she'd Make like her it. Toes do Oh, no. She would love that shit. <laughs> she would always forgive it. Do you think she'd forgive you like a motherfucker? Did your wife ever say, Tracy, enough with sticking your tongue in my asshole? Just fuck me <laughs> like a no. normal guy. Hell no, Robin, no. Listen, <laughs> you ain't butthole, Howard. <laughs> if you eat pussy, you ain't butthole. They ain't put that far apart. Aren't you afraid they That's say... That's a bridge over troubled water. But they say <laughs> eating vagina and butthole, you can get uh, diseases. I don't give a fuck what they say. Who are they? <laughs> Who are they? But you won't eat a woman's ass after she defecates. Nah, not no random She's woman. She's got to go. A, a random one, I'm not even taking my socks off. <laughs> my socks don't come off, it don't count. Because your penis is so big, did your wife ever say, hey, don't put it all in? No, she just say, oh, it's in my stomach. Really? It, it's that big? And do you ever do you ever sit there and say to yourself, my vein, one of my veins is the size of your arm. Uh, believe me, oh I, I only wish I had a penis like that. <laughs> Are your balls big too? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> big like Lou Rawls. Really? <laughs> That's amazing. Do you, do you ever say to yourself, like, uh, oh my God, you know, now, I mean, God forbid. I mean, it's so great. And by the way, do you shoot a big load, too? Do you have a big... Like thick... a motherfucker, man. Like you got to a... get a mop bucket. Really? <laughs> Y'all get this mop... God damn it. <laughs> I'm for real. I'm going to put one on your, your lower back. Are you worried about your success now with film, with comedy, your on tour? Your... Do Not you worry it could go to your head and Not then you fuck up nothing. your marriage? Will you stay go faithful? Deep in, I would have did that shit 20 years ago. Will you stay I faithful? I ain't thinking about nobody. I ain't even in the game, man. You're not. Only one with two women in my pocket. That's go my ahead. wife and my daughter. That's it. I ain't thinking about that shit. I forgot more pussy than most men ever going to get. Right. I'm a comedian. You're in a different place. I don't place. care about that shit. Right. I'm 47, going on 48, married. I'm good. I almost lost my life. I ain't thinking about that dumb shit. Good. This is the new you. This is not arrested development over here. No, you're focused. No. You're focused. Always been focused. You're focused. I've always been focused. Not like that. You, like you this. see what I'm married to, man? I'm I saw. Chilling. I believe I'm me, I looked chilling. that up. You know, we came to your birthday. Shit. We came to your birthday. I was with Joan Rivers. Yeah. Just chilling. How do you keep... Joan from... Rivers sent me some stuff, and Robin Williams sent me some stuff in the hospital. Mm. I have downstairs on my I floor. didn't want to yeah. tell you, but maybe now you're well enough. Joan Rivers died. I know. Oh, you I know. know. All right. It hit me hard. Yeah. Hey, Don Rickles called me a lot. I love you, Don. Did he? Yeah. He called me a lot. Called you know, I did, lot. I did call, but nobody took my call. Well, I wasn't ready. I guess I wasn't big my enough. My wife ain't, ain't no. Man, what? I understand. How, my wife know how I feel about you, man. You mm. and Robin. Um, good time here. Yeah. On this couch. Well, we love you. Coming we really in here, do. Man, coming in here was, was different. I think seeing Tracy Morgan now, it's more important than ever. Robin was right. If we'd had them seatbelts on, we might have died. That, I heard, that's I possible. That. I saw that interview. Well, so I tried to she tell him. She worked as she was in the drama <laughs> trauma unit. 
Yeah. She knows. She does. The nurses told me. Mm. Thank God. Really? We don't know if y'all had the seatbelts in the police report. But when you drive your car now, it's do in you? In the police report, do we you don't know if they had them on or not. Tracy, right. now when you drive your car, you wear your seatbelt, though, right? I've always worn my seatbelt. Right. But it's possible in your accident, not wearing a seatbelt might have saved your life. Who knows? Who I don't knows? know. Nobody was in that truck that night. Right. And nobody that was in there remembers it. Nobody. Nobody. Mm. Only God knows. Only God knows. I live with that every day, man. I, I have to live my life now. I got my daughter's three. I look at my life and I go, wow, I'm fortunate. You know what I'm saying? I'm here with it's a my miracle. friends and my love. It's a miracle yeah. you're back. Yeah. It's a miracle it you're back. It could have been a train wreck. I don't think you'll ever forget this experience, right? Well, who no, would? no amount of time. Nobody around me would. My you, psychiatrist told me the two biggest car accidents in history was yours and Princess Diana's. Right. Mm. Imagine that. Mm. Wow. Yours and Princess. She was a princess, and that was four one. Do you do you have any nightmares? Do you do you? I still. Yeah, but I got so much with my daughter, my wife, and how, so how much often, good stuff I look forward Tracy, to now. How Come often, in here. How often are you go to a psychiatrist? How often do you see him? I one? see him. Uh, well, Dr. Feinberg lives right there. Right. I see my psychiatrist like once a week, once a month. At least, month. right? Yeah. You got it. You got to go. They want to stay. They they stay on top of me. My kidney doctor. Right. They all stay on top of me. Right. They all stay on top of this. Yeah. Are you surprised by someone who didn't reach out? Have there been people who did not reach out to you after your accident that you feel should have? No, I don't no, feel that way. You don't feel that way. That's not the way I think. Right. That's not the way I think. I just I told you years ago. I accept and appreciate me. Right. I'm right. quite sure people, you know, don't wish I would die. Now, maybe they are. I don't know. But most people that I come across in life every day are really happy to see me. They really, I'm patient with them. I'm happy to I see you. I take pictures. You know, you I do? just live my life, man. Did you? I've before, always done that, though, before the did. accident. I, I love my fans. I love them. And, you know, I take, I, I'm patient with them. Mm -hmm. I'll take a picture with you in a heartbeat. You know what I Cost was thinking? Me nothing. You ever see these people go into a coma and they come out and they can speak a whole other language or they speak with an accent and shit? Like, no, Yo, anything. shit happens, man. Yeah. I came out and I feel like my stand-up went to the next level, man. Right. The shit I'm thinking about, the shit I'm coming up with on stage. I mm -hmm. see that today. I think you're more, I don't know, there's something different with you. I don't know, man. I don't know what, what you, your eyes see in me. I see something. I just feel different. Did you bury any old feuds after an accident like that? Did you say, fuck it, man? You know what? Life's nah, too short. I'm still feuding. I'm <laughs> you still that. feuding? Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> You're still angry. Yeah, you owe me money, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> How many people owe you money? I'm gonna go, a lot of motherfuckers. I'm going to collect I'm the river which a lot of people are drinking. <laughs> now, Tracy, I'm going to recommend that people uh, go out and see this tour, picking up the pieces. This is it. You know um, what, man? I feel great to be nominated for this Emmy, man. You got to win it. I feel great to be nominated for this Emmy, and I'm in good company. Bob Newhart. Go ahead. Larry David. Go all ahead. these people, man. Can you beat these guys, though? That's it what it's about. It about that for me, man. Runner-up is just, not good enough. You got to win this one. And will you write a speech? It. Will you write a speech? You will. And who will be, uh, of course, beside myself, who will you thank <laughs> in that speech? Seriously. I'm just going to say at the end, man. This one is for you, Jimmy Mac. No, oh, you're gonna do. You, you're gonna. You already know what this you're gonna say. This one is for you, Jimmy Mac. Yeah. No, I don't know what I'm gonna say. I get that. I but that's the speech. But I just know Jimmy. I yeah. just know my dude, man. I miss him. Can I say something to you? He was a good dude. Kind. How'd you meet him? Very warm. Where'd you meet him? He was the first person I ever met in show business. What was he doing he was at the running time? the workshop. Uh, so you went and took a comedy workshop? And he was the first one that came with the keys to open the door. He said, I'm Jimmy Mack. I said, I'm Tracy Morgan. And he was the one that took me around the neighborhood to all the comedy clubs. This is my little man right here. He's funny. He's funny. In other he words, he took you. One. He encouraged you. Jimmy Mack was the guy who encouraged you, right, Tracy? In other words, how old were you at that point? Uh, Maybe 21. 21. And most people didn't believe in you, right? He did. Yeah. My dad did. Yeah, but some people didn't think you were funny or a guy from your neighborhood could make it, right? Because guys in your neighborhood don't necessarily... Don't make it. They don't make it. And a guy like Jimmy Mack said, you could make I'm it. I'm living proof. If I'm inspiration to those now, 
than fine, and I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I inspire a lot of people, man. And Jimmy was genuinely happy for you. If I could get by a truck like that and live and all that, then you can too. And Jimmy was genuinely happy for you. In other words, some guys... He would... didn't care about all the other accolades. He just was happy. He was just happy that I was funny. All the little dudes in the chamber, it tickled him when we came off on stage. It just tickled him. I love but, but think about all the people in this world who ignore you. You know, I had so many teachers who never even paid me any attention, and they, you know, now I'm famous. It's okay, yeah. but it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. But but Jimmy okay. Mack said, "All right, I see something in this guy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Jim. Yeah, that was Jim. He took me and Face Man, uh, my uh, another comedian, fellow comedian, named Face Man. Um, he took us on his wing. That's great. But then again, you know, before I met Jim, my my pops was a cool dude from Vietnam, being a Bronx rolling, smoking his joint, playing the bongos at night with the Puerto Rican heads, and he was one of those dudes. When you saw your dad in heaven, uh, why was he wearing a green suit? Do you think? Yeah, know. why was he in all green? Did he wear a green suit in life? I don't know. Was that his thing? I don't know. I think it was. His, uh, I may have been in and out. May have been the medication. I don't know. Did you get your big cock from him? Did you inherit that from him? I think from so. He's skinny family? dude. chocolate. <laughs> yeah, dimples. Yeah, and dimples wasn't deep for no reason. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Gee, my dad. Uh, I didn't inherit his, but my dad had a big dick. We, we, has a big dick, but uh, come on, how are you it. tall, dude, slim dude? You got dude, the huge shit, dude. This big. You got, Come like, on, man. Like get the fuck out of Looks here. Looks like a fucking worm. Come on. You're not that fucking clever <laughs> no. and all that. No, I'm being honest. You had low self-esteem. <laughs> I'd be so much more clever. Your confidence I... and your esteem was through the roof, nah. man. But I got to say this, though, man. What was I going to say? See, that's the accident. <laughs> that's it, the accident. <laughs> See, if you forget what you're going to say, just blame the accident. All right, listen to me. You're the best. And I love that you're here. Thank I didn't you. know when I'd see you again. I didn't know if I'd see you again. I wasn't going to bug you and say, come in but here. That was one of the things we talked about when I came home. Like, after the 40th, uh -huh. I told my I'm going to go I want to go on Howard because I will watch the shows that we did. Yeah. Just to see where my funny was, how, well, how you, I was. You've always been funny on this show. But I couldn't watch it for this show right here. I just wanted to come and kick it. I knew this was a different show. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew that happened and we was going to rap about it. Yeah, yeah. how can you not? I mean, for God's sakes. Tracy's out there now. He's going to win the Emmy. I predict he will win the Emmy, which is, I think, in September or October the Emmys, right? Next month. Right. And you yeah, got to go, right? You're going to go. Me and my wife will go. You will go. What yeah. will she wear? Will she wear a uh, titty dress? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I don't know. I don't Why know. Why not? Why not put her She's in a titty She's a beautiful dress? girl, man. I, I feel fortunate to have oh, her as fuck a wife. yeah. I feel married, anyone man. would be fortunate. We married. Yo, the wedding, yo, how was... I, I didn't invite anyone from show business to the wedding. I wanted it to be a real wedding. You, you know, know who's single us. now? Who? Chris Rock. Yeah, Rock, my man. I see Rock all the time at the cellar. Do you? He's my man. Yeah. But yeah, my man. He wearing red sneakers. What's up you know with that? You know why he wears? Because he want to get young girls. Uh. Young girls like colors. <laughs> <laughs> like Gotta get those colors primary colors. Things. Do you advise? <laughs> when you see Rock. a guy like Chris Rock. Rock is my heart. He came to the house. <laughs> he did? When, when Top 5, when he did, before it came in the movie theaters, like yeah. two months, he came and brought me to film. Oh, wow. Well, he that's knew nice. I was going to be ready to go. Yeah. He came to my house early in the morning, like 11. Yo, Trey Boom, he sat down. He kicked Tina came to the house. Right. Uh -huh. People came and saw me. Robert Carlyle came to the house. I would have come. They, no one my would let me Schmeichel in. My man is right there. I know. I knew, I met Schmeichel my first year on SNL. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love Robert, man. He's my friend. Do you sit down with Chris Rock and say, listen, don't go too pussy crazy with uh, being nah, single I don't, now? No, you don't got to say that to Rock. Rock too smart for that. He knows. Rock, the grown man, he's smart. He's my OG. He's smart. Yeah. The but, smart man. He's smarter than that. But a little advice wouldn't hurt, right? Nah, well, I, I, well, I don't want to overstep my bounds with my dude. No, nah. nah, but I told him, I said, you know, you know, you, 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 you good. Yeah. Don't go out here and go crazy. Do you think you'll become an inspirational speaker? Is that in your future? Do you think you might Me? even go to like hospitals? Me? Yeah, you. Do you think you might end up as? If I do anything, it'll be through my sense of humor. Okay. That's the gift he right. gave me. All right. I tell people in interviews all the time, Robin, they want to talk about material. I said, don't. It's like what Bruce Lee said to Enter the Dragon. Uh huh. It's like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't focus on a finger or you're going to miss all that heavenly glory, that right. other heavenly glory. What's important to me is the funny from Hollis to Hollywood, but was he good? We're not going to talk about what he's talking about. Was he funny? Did you laugh? Funny is Let's where, not, thank God. That's the gift he gave me with the funny. Thank God the funny is here. The in other funny. words, you're not going back to the so serious, you're going to Tracy. funny. Morgan. Tracy Morgan is back. He has William Tell Dick. 
<laughs> and he's Ray eating up. ass. He's <laughs> eating butt. You know it. He's got comedy and a huge cock. Hey, and I'm it grew two inches. like it's hot. Pick it up when it's cold. And believe me. And if anyone can put two inches on my dick, I'll pay them. Uh. <laughs> I'm telling you that. So look, Tracy Morgan, you're out there picking up the pieces right. tour. That's mm-hmm. going to be happening Carnegie Hall Saturday, November fifth. Wow, this is my can... second time doing Carnegie, but I'm That's going back deal. as this Tracy. Yeah. That's a big and this, deal. I'm much more mature. Right. You know why? When I love coming on this show, because I get to be so immature, talk about pussy and all. Of <laughs> man, all what time kids talk about pussy all day long? What I'm time? Grown ass man. I like to talk more about money, you... but that got to be on the low low. You are damn right, the low low. Damn, Wayne said that they gave me ninety five million dollars over five years. Is that a lot of money? That's a lot. Because you know, in money. court, nothing is no taxes come out. No, like child support can't even fuck with wow. me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that right? Nothing come out. You get all of it, and your agent doesn't all get any of that. Come out, they ain't business. That that's an business. accident. That's right. All yeah, they, they come didn't out. book him for <laughs> that. All that come out is the lawyer's fee. When I read ninety-five million, and I, I know no, you, but Damon Wayne's don't know. Da- no, he doesn't know. How the know. fuck you know what's in my pocket? If that was true, Walmart would have sued the shit out of me because right. it's all confidential. Right. right. Only people that know. In my pocket is in my bed. My two girls. That's yeah. it. You told your wife. I'm going to my grave with that. Is it smart to tell your wife what you got from Walmart? Well, she was in on it. She was there. But you know the. Uh, Where's she going? I'm not getting married again. So the 95 that's million. It. When we read 95 million, that's because some guy just picked that out of the air. Yeah, that's. I that don't know where the fuck yeah. that came from. That's Damon from. Wayne. Nobody knows what I got except for me, my business manager, and my lawyer. But my if wife. you're doing Ferraris, you bought projects, and you're and I'm doing flying, that before the accident, though. But you're flying private all the time. That's now. all good. That's all good. It's all good. Are you are you investing this money that you got, whatever the amount is? Are you do, what are you doing with it? Let's I talk. got some money on the streets. No, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> Drop off, pick up. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm chilling. Are you? I'm chilling. I don't discuss that paper, man. You know what you ought to do? Grow a beard. And get one of these farms like Long John Stewart. Them, yeah, like, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So become a recluse. Get one of those you oh big bushy God. beard and Come all on. that. I Do might me finance favor. a couple of movies. I don't know. Blink twice if it's over a hundred million. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at you not blinking. <laughs> what time? What time tonight? You're going to be eating ass. Go ahead. And tell everyone. You said you got. You want to do it. Eleven. Ten or eleven. I'm gonna go over to the property. Could you imagine all the my pussy? My backyard there? of my new mansion but, looks like. Uh, boys and girls high school football field. <laughs> Describe it to me. Boys and girls. But you're not going to blow the money. You, it means some of the money. In the, I'm you, good with money, man. I don't care what people say. I'm good with money. <laughs> what man. do people say? I'm good. I'm going to blow the money because I got a car. Well, they see the Ferrari. On, they hear about the private jets. They hear about it's the renovation. The good, all right. We just want to make sure. It's you know what I mean? It's good. Unbelievable. What's the backyard look like? What you got back there? You got a baseball field? No, I just moved my pool from one side to another. Just like that. Ain't nothing but heavy equipment back there now. <laughs> In other words, you moved the pool just to fucking move it. I mean, Listen, you didn't need to. Listen, my bath water comes from the ceiling. <laughs> Why move the pool? That's the last if thing you, you sit do. on my toilet and take a shit, you could warm your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Why move the pool? Because I just wanted to move it. Just for the hell of it, right? Well, you do, you... <laughs> hey, listen, I ain't getting my Doritos truck, man. Come on, man. This wasn't a Snapple truck. And this ain't no above ground pool. This wasn't this Walgreens. Is... Are Come you on, say man. you saying this pool is in the ground? Yeah. Oh, ooh. I got to see this. You got one in the house and one upstairs. And you got servants and stuff going on? I ain't paying for no servants. I can make my own grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> You're not looking for anything fancy. Nah, I'm for the hood, man. I'm man. for the projects. I ain't going to never forget that. 212 Troop Avenue. I heard you're so rich now that you're going to move the pool back to the old location. You've moved it, and now you're going to move it back. You're going to keep moving it every year. Do what you want to do. Holy Put it like this. The dude who caught the wreck, my neighbor, the wreck, his house is $38 million. Really? Did you? Oh, listen, I live in Alpine. That's oh. all hedge fund, baby. Right. I'm surprised you didn't even move right the fuck out of my Alpine. My next door neighbor on the right, yeah. you know what he does? What? You know those big oil rigs in this deep sea? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get oil? He builds them. He builds the oil rig. He owns the company. It's all billionaires. You got an elevator? I'm a motherfucker for the projects living right next door. This is justice. Do you have an elevator in your house? Yeah. Oh, shit. And a bowling alley. Yeah, a basketball court, all that. Basketball court? I'm a big movie theater. I don't got to leave my house, never. Oh, fuck. I'm chilling. You're goddamn right. But it's all for my family. 
Yeah. Are there All any? I need is new pair of sneakers of fifteen hundred. <laughs> fifteen hundred in my pocket and new pair of sneakers. That's all I any need. Any black people in your neighborhood? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are there? Yeah. What? Are there? What? Now there is. I told my brother, if I ever see your ass in my neighborhood, I'm gonna call the cops on you, my motherfucking <laughs> self. Cause you got no business here, god damn it. Do the cops hassle you? Cause they say, oh, there's no, a black man. Nah, they, they know me. it's they you. Know yeah, they, they know, know. They they, me. You made, you I made, made it clear. Laugh. Right, right. Everybody Listen to this. This was highly anticipated. You're right. People are pulling over on the shoulders going, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> Morgan and Stern and Robin? Oh, oh shit. Man. People are going to be like, you know how I many people got fired from their jobs listening to us and fuck around on the show? So no one's ever going to know how much. Just listen to us fucking. Nah, ain't nobody going to know. No one's going to know how Not much money you they got have. the big JJ. Uh. <laughs> Do, do, do you ever think about that? You, look at this new house. Imagine the pussy running through this house. No. If you, my wife, oh my God. This her dog. This her domain. But sometimes, don't you look at that house and go, man, look at all no. the pool. No, 17 year old Tracy would have did that. Uh, tennis courts. 17 year old Tracy would have did that. Do you wear like 47 year old Tracy don't do that because I'm only playing semi pro now. Mm. Do you get dressed up for, <laughs> do you get dressed you, you, up for you dinner and everything now? Nah, for uh, what? You, know what I mean? you go for Peter Lugas and stuff like that? You could be eating an ass buffet. I'm still eating Chinese food from the hood. Nice. Four chicken wings and fried rice. That's, how, that's how I get down. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how. But I count my carbs now, so I eat, I eat right. Yeah, you look good. I eat right. Are I you working out too? Yeah, I work out. I hmm. eat my car. Yo, dude, I'm doing it right this time. I got Look a second chance. Like a trying to do it symbol. right. Are you a sex symbol, man? Yeah, I'm a sex symbol. Oh. But my daughter's three years old. I'm trying to be here for her. Mm. Yeah. She playing now. She running me around the fucking house all day long. Doesn't Daddy she need uh, I got to play with my daughter. But doesn't she need some uh, black friends? I mean, in that whitey neighborhood, isn't there just too many white people for her to find her identity? No, nah, she don't have a problem, man. People, people, with me and her mother ain't going to raise it that way, white and black. Right. We're not going to raise our daughter that Thank way, man. You, you don't worry about that. that. You don't That's worry about that. They're just people. Right, right, My right. wife is biracial, but I don't see that. You I don't see my wife. Right, right. That's it doesn't wife. matter. It doesn't matter. What now, is she supposed to come out as? She's supposed to have an accent? Is she wearing Balmain jeans? My mother-in-law Balmain. name is Chrissy <laughs> Wallover. Whiter than you. And I love my mother-in-law. That's mine. When I see my mother-in-law, my wife, and my daughter standing right there, I tell motherfucker around me that all that belong to me. Right. All that belong to me. So if you ain't willing to lose a toe or finger, walk away. Right. I'm going all out for mine. <laughs> right. I'm going all out for mine. Because I'm your wife is Jamaican, so... I'm going to Jamaican. I'm going to look for a garbage can. I'm going to crack a Heineken bottle, and I'm going to gut you like a trout. If, you're, if, 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 if your wife all is so... All that's mine. Your wife, your wife is very beautiful. Do you worry about other men hitting on her? Or... Uh, my confidence is too high. Come on, Walmart. Right. Let's you don't try Walmart. to... You don't Let's tr- say Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> I'm like if you now. If she, looks, about that. if she looks at other guys, you just go, Walmart. Oh boy, oh boy, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Did you sign? Did you sign a prenup? Yeah, I mean, you know, I ain't going into that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you mean yes? Get no, I ain't going into that. All right. Get but you're telling me the money you got now, you can't even be touched by alimony or anything. That is your well, money. Well, when you get awarded money in court, mm. it come out. I've never been awarded. The government court. can't touch you. Wow. Well, well, it's yours, You're dude. above when the government. When the government can't touch you, nobody All, can touch listen, you. Listen, I don't care about none of that stuff. All yeah. we was doing that night was we were on our way home from work. That's right. You we were go- just coming home from work. It's crazy. That's all. I didn't ask yeah. for none of that. No, no. You weren't looking for trouble. I didn't want to make you upset. I didn't no. want to make you upset. I didn't want to make my fans upset. I didn't want my wife being upset like has that. The, has I the, didn't want none of that. Right. Tracy, though, has the truck driver ever tried to apologize to you personally? I don't know. No. You don't know? No, I'd stay away from that. It's all in the state's hands now. I see. I see. You know what I'm saying? It's all in the state's hands. That's not your I, problem. My, my, that for me went was back there. I live my life now. You got to buy Balmain jeans with all your money. What's that? Uh, That's supposedly Balmain those jeans? are the jeans. Is that more than a Birkin bag? Those are skinny Twenty five hundred dollar jeans. I'm not buying that. You clothing? I'm straight Levi's. Lee on my leg, Adidas on my feet. You see me? I got the plain Reeboks. You never seen me coming in with the Michael Jackson Captain Crunch jacket. You never seen none of that, Robin. People must be you trying never to. Never seen Trey coming here looking crazy. Yeah. Right. Most, I got my number one dad chain yeah. on. I got my little bracelet, and that's shit. That's it. I keep my money on the low. But thank there God, go. we're not throwing nothing away. You gotta no be careful. No twenty-five thousand dollar jeans for you. Yeah. No. How do you I know? Went to I went to Anguilla, but I. 
stayed in the village because I didn't want to pay for the vi- the villa. I bet you <laughs> a lot. Of, I bet you a lot of people try to like now milk you for money. You know what I mean? They see you in there. They're oh, there's the guy. Nah, with money. no, they you don't. Know, they, you know, I got my game face on. When you did the construction Look, on I your got house, my game face on. When you did the construction on your house, and they try to jack up the price on you now. No, because, no, everybody no. was cool. Everybody was cool. Well, that's the best thing I've ever. Everybody heard. was cool. I got people around me. Mark Landsman, my man Lewis. Okay, I got people around me. My team take care of me, man. What's that bracelet what? worth? That this? gold bracelet you're wearing. Yeah, that looks expensive. This is 90000 90000 So. And what about that necklace? This is my number one dad. Yeah. You, you better. You don't see nothing on me. You better. You better. Uh, little have opulence. A, that's all it is. I hope you have opulence. a security person. I got my little opulence. Right. Sure. I got my little opulence. opulence. No. I I Nobody says there's top. something wrong with that. Nothing no opulence. Wrong with that. <laughs> No opulence. Tracy, I predict you will win the Emmy. I've never seen Howard Stern in the fucking airport. I know he got a jet, too. What jet? He got a jet. I don't go <laughs> anywhere. You go to Teterboro every day. I don't go anywhere. You go to Teterboro. I sit home. You go to Teterboro. When you all go out, y'all go to Teterboro. This is about you, not me. All right, look. Tracy Morgan. <laughs> See how you switch it over? Tracy, you lived, and that's all I give a fuck about. Thank you. I, I love, love you, you. I love you. I really, truly yes, do. Sir. I'm so goddamn happy you are alive and doing well, and you got your vision back, you got your health back, you're walking, you're talking, and you're doing comedy, you're up for an Emmy, you've done 600 movies, and now picking up the pieces tour. Who would have thought two years ago you'd be on any tour? But here you are. God bless you, my friend. And I, I really do, I just appreciate you so much, and I'm glad I got to say that to you today, because I've been waiting to say it for two years. And, you know, I know I'm not at the house with Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock. He doesn't take your calls. I know you don't take my calls, but, man, <laughs> I was I was praying for you, and I don't uh, pray for many people. And I prayed for you because I love you, and I care about you, and I'm happy you're back. I really mean it. You're here and you're alive. And thank you for being here today. I know uh, it's a lot. You, you talked about a lot, and a lot of this stuff is hard to talk about, yeah. I know. So I appreciate you doing that. Thank you. And I love believe you, me. I love you, Robin. Uh, you made us laugh, and you made us cry. Tracy. I'd blow you if your dick wasn't so big. Uh, it's okay. too big, Howard? Yeah, too you fucking big. fractured jaw. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to walk away with a fractured jaw. And Tracy, for tickets and info on all of Tracy's tour dates, you go to TracyMorgan.com. And I'd like to say to all the fans out there, I love you. And for the Mac family, McNair family, I love you guys too. And I love all the guys, Jeff and Artie and Harris Stanton that were in their car and Ty and Ed. I love all you guys. Thank you. I love my fans. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. The Howard Stern Show.